extremism and hate, as we know, affect markets. They affect your employees. They affect your customers. They affect how you operate. And anti-Semitism right now is the most virulent strain right. of this hate. Okay, but here's the question. So I was with the CEO mm -hmm. yesterday, and the, uh, the CEO had been approached about what can you do to help? Yeah. What can you do to help? Yeah. And he's saying to me, well, I'm thinking about what can I do to help, but I'm, and, and he's Jewish, wants to help wants to figure out what kind of pressure could be applied, but is so scared to speak out publicly or to do something even privately that could therefore become public and either offend his customer base yeah. or potentially affect his employee base. Yeah. And for some reason, this issue, uh, around, which I think I would imagine shouldn't be a, a politically uh, uh, polarizing one around getting hostages back, right. somehow is. Explain it. I mean, look, hatred of Jews is a universal problem, and it demands a universal response. Now, look, there are bad actors who are trying to say what Israel is doing in the Middle East is the cause of anti-Semitism. But that's baloney. We have seen an explosion of anti-Jewish hate, and it didn't start after the Israelis went into Gaza. It started on October the 7th. Right. We've seen staggering acts of right. harassment and violence, by the way, not just in America, but in, in England, in France, in Germany, all over Europe. It, it wasn't it surprising enough in our, back home, Andrew, that the, the political continuum yeah. go out far enough left, whether it's college campuses or you, you know who I'm talking about, what, whatever, wherever you are, and you get to some oppressor, oppressed, apartheid, uh, 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 analogies. You get to that point, and in Davos, you're surprised. These are the well, wait a second. Every, no, no, look, but these Doug, are the I biggest globalist elitists in the world. Of course, they're going to be. If you go, uh, if you get woke enough, well, don't, you got to be. I, I just, I, I, you I don't agree with the well, strictly happened? woke thing because the other thing is there's also these skinheads on the other side. You always who, bring that up, but those I bring have it up not because been, those have not been. On. The truth is, in the last 90 days, it has been anti-Israel, you know, For radical anti skinhead, There's a hundred thousand kids on college campuses that have been fed this crap, Joe. The reality. The reality is that it is those right-wing extremists who were shooting and murdering Jews in Pittsburgh, in Poway, you know, across in, Europe. I, 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 of course, I'm not. So look, in let's any just way. acknowledge. Let's acknowledge it's not just right left. It's right and wrong because you've occupied the left so comfortably for so long. Again, and then to see it uh, eat one. Oh of its come own. on! Let's, one, I, one, one, one screaming it's, it's, from the rooftops. The yeah. other is actually <laughs> shooting from the rooftops, look, and is, that's a, a major difference. It is appalling the way these universities have turned a blind eye to this. Why isn't it being discussed in Davos? Then? What's, what's your what's your reason? You know, it's this not is the, the you panel that I'm left, doing. It's an oppressor oppressed. Look, like most of these CEOs are not like woke activists. They're scared. Why are they scared to talk, Andrew? They're going to. It's going well, so to. They're scared to talk because they have they have they have Palestinian exactly. employees right. um, who they think are going to go after them. They they have uh, that, uh, employees. Palestinian employees are not Hamas. Well, no, it actually goes to just how anti-Semitic this is the deal. The, the world is. This is that's what it's about. This is the reality that this Hamas logic is rooted in anti-Jewish hate that right. plays on all these tropes that have been up for a long time. And yeah, I think some of these chief executives are afraid because they don't know what to do. But here's what you do: leadership means you lead. Well, you heard Carp and, and he Alex is worried. amazing, and we need more. Albert Borla has been great. We need more executives. Right. You know, now Jeff Sonnefeld would tell you a lot of them are doing good stuff, but being out in front like Alex is. But they don't want anyone do you think to it's know? behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. not how, enough. How much do you think it's a function of not offending, not just how many anti-Semitic people there are in the world, but uh, a number of countries and the leaders that are here that the World Economic Forum is trying to bring here. Of course, there's lots of also, I'm, I'm told, behind the scenes conversations happening with the Qataris, who are probably the most powerful and influential in the discussion about getting uh, these hostages back. But Russia's not here because of Ukraine. Russia's not here. I think it's shameful the Iranian foreign minister was here and he didn't get pressed on this. The truth is, is that we have a terrible crisis right now in the Middle East. We need those hostages to come home yesterday. Today's the 104th day they've been held in captivity in these tunnels. Billions of dollars went into these tunnels. They have a network overseas of NGOs in Europe and America who promote this myth, this lie that Israel is committing genocide. It's, it's disgusting. And we have Jewish people getting attacked in broad daylight. Mm -hmm. This needs to change. I want to put more of this on the agenda, and hopefully today's the start. Your Biden administration grade? Um... Well, look, it's still a work in progress. The semester isn't over yet. I'm glad they released the national strategy. I'm glad Biden's been strong on Israel. For everyone who's strong, there's someone who says that the bloodshed's got to end now. Right?
Look, let's be clear. The death of innocence is terrible. But the truth is, this started with Hamas. This can end with Hamas. If they return the hostages today, whole thing okay, will be over. The Red Sea and what we're seeing there. Does yeah, that, the Houthis. With the Houthis just attacking all of these ships, does this, this is make about it Iran. more? This is not about Palestinian nationalism. It's about Iran that wants to exert control and spread its influence. That's what this is. Okay, the Houthis flag, the Houthi flag, you know what it says? It says on it, it's got four lines. It says, death to America, death to Israel, Curse the Jews. Allah is great. Uh, let me We're ask you Jews a again. very political question, but it, it relates to this. Far away. Uh, we've been talking all morning about whether the conventional wisdom here in Davos is that former President Trump becomes the president next year, uh, that that's sort of now almost becoming baked into the cake, whether that's a contrarian signal, given, given that Davos is often wrong, maybe may something right. else. But do you, and we talked to Jamie Dimon about, uh, you know, which president or which president would be better for the country. On your specific issue around what you do for a living, who do you think would be better president? Look, uh, President Trump. Per president Trump did some things around Israel that were incontrovertibly good, like the Abraham Accords was an amazing achievement. Moving the embassy was very positive, and he did some things that were really bad, it's like the, welcoming it's white. It's supremacy. a microcosm of the conversation we just had. You got but, the Charlottesville skinheads, but he's probably a better friend to Israel in let, general. Let, let the man but, answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> and but you right? know, as I understand it, Biden's popularity is higher than Trump's in Israel today because he's been so good on this. Look, at the end of the day, what I've got to hope is that some degree of common sense prevails. But what I'm hearing from CEOs here is they're all doing the scenario planning now about Trump winning. That's what I've heard from several European chief executives. But what's your answer? <laughs> That's why I answer, because he's not going to give you an answer. Yeah, I, I, it isn't yes and no. I hope for the best and prepare for the worst. A great uh, great dodge, Jonathan. Jonathan, the Abraham Accords were progress. This is why the attack happened. Because That's the right. Iranians wanted Hamas to break up the possibility of Israel and Saudi normalizing, which would have been, by the way, the surest bet for a peaceful resolution of the conflict in a Palestinian state. I mean, Biden's in a tough place. He's got people in his administration that are mad at how pro-Israel. And it so hasn't been James, That's true, too. Enough. James Baker wasn't a big fan of Israel, and he was the chief of staff of the White House. Let's be honest. Again, you see this on both sides, Joe. But Joe Biden has been rock solid over the last Did you say there's good people on both sides? <laughs> well done.